And my guy Cam said them cardiac attack ravens are back. I mean, they really never left because this is what we get like every week. If the Ravens win or lose by more than one score, we get surprised because they like making everything be dramatic. Anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from that game that we watched last night. And let's just jump straight into it, Lamar. <laughs> Lamar even caught us outside laughing. He's like, man, he couldn't believe how bad of a performance that was. But Lamar Jackson, um, four interceptions. Three of them his fault. Uh, the one where Rashad Bateman thought it was for him. A little misunderstanding there. It happens. Not a big deal. At least it didn't result in a loss. But um, stuff happens. Stuff happens. It's funny. Somebody in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the live stream last night, they were talking about, man, it's crazy how a lot of Lamar Jackson's, how, how many fluky interceptions that he gets. I would love to sit down and review every single interception of Lamar Jackson that he's thrown this season and see how true that is. I know some of them have been, but last night, three out of the four. They were not fluky at all. They were all on Lamar 1,000%. Uh, there was one, the deep ball to Mark Andrews. And, and I love that Mark Andrews went for the catch. He tried to make that one-hand scoop catch. He tried to make something happen again but because Lamar had threw it short. He threw it short. Mark Andrews went for the catch. And like I said last night, I feel like if Mark Andrews would not have went for the catch, then it would have been an incompletion. But I am not mad at him at all for going for the catch. That's what you're supposed to do. You're, you're a receiver slash tight end. You, you're supposed to catch the ball. So he went for it. He tried to make something happen. But that ended up making the ball come up. Even though, Again, the ball was thrown short. So Mark Andrews was just doing what he could do. But um, the, the defender, I forgot who it was, he made a crazy play. So shout out to that Browns defender. I don't know if it was John Johnson. I forgot who it was. But great play by him. Then uh, the, uh, the one before that where, again, to all to Mark Andrews. <laughs> Everything was to Mark Andrews. So. <laughs> the one before that, uh, the defender, Lamar Jackson, he had Mark Andrews right there. The defender was sitting there waiting, and he was like, oh, yeah, Lamar ain't going to throw it. Oh, I know he's not going to throw it. Oh, I know he, I, there's no way that Lamar's about to throw this ball. Lamar threw that ball, jumped it, interception. He made it easy for him. He made it so easy for him. That's like when you're playing Madden, and you use her in somewhere, and you're just sitting on a route. And you like, nah, ain't no way this dude I'm playing online is about to throw. There's no way he's going to throw the disrespect. I know he's not. And he does it. And you jump it. Oh, easy money. That's exactly what that was. And then the one before that, Mark Andrews again, of course. But Mark Andrews was in between two defenders. Uh, and he had a defender to his right and a defender to his left. Lamar Jackson, instead of putting it on the money right to Mark Andrews, put him in the chest like we know Lamar Jackson can do. He, the ball went inside, he, he threw the ball inside, it was just a terrible throw, easy interception, easy interception for the defender. So Lamar, the, last night's game was a huge example of the team having Lamar Jackson's back. They like, man, this dude Lamar, so many times he has saved us, so many times he has overcome, whether it be bad play calling, bad, bad execution, he has overcome so much for so long, you know what, Lamar Jackson... You go have a day. A bad day, but you go have a day. We got it from here. And it, it was important that uh, the defense remained great yesterday because they were great yesterday. Um, but Lamar, yeah, bad game. Bad game doesn't make him a bad player. I, I was very disappointed that there were uh, quite a few people. I know a lot of them were trolls, but there were some people that were serious and they, 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 they question whether Lamar is worth a big deal based off of last night's game. And it's just, it's crazy when people do that. But when you think about how Lamar, he doesn't, um, the, the same criteria that gets applied to other quarterbacks, it doesn't get applied to Lamar. So then that makes it less crazy that people think that way. It's sad, uh, but it's true. You know, Lamar doesn't get looked at like other quarterbacks get looked at. He is not allowed to make mistakes. He is not allowed to have a bad game. Anytime Lamar has a bad game, it's, it, people start questioning the long term. Oh, is he really worth it? Every time they start question, oh, this, this is a franchise quarterback? Every time. Now, if he consistently was bad, then I would completely understand. If he showed time and time again that the Ravens, oh, they could do this thing without him, then I would understand. But neither of the two are true. Anyway, uh, offensive line, same story. <laughs> same, same story. Offensive line is not good. They're not good. 
Um, they Lamar been running for his life all year long. Tyler Huntley got some action last week, and he got to get the uh, the Lamar Jackson experience running for your life all game long. So, um, but it's they. So shout out to both our quarterbacks because they find ways to overcome it. It, it, it takes a lot. Well, last night I guess he ain't really overcome it, but boy, um, it is just rough. I know somebody mentioned how. Um, with Lamar, maybe he was like overthinking or overprocessing stuff. And I know my guy responded to them. He's like, Well, if if you're so used to not having any time in the pocket, you're gonna overthink stuff. And yeah, I mean still bad throws. Those were three out of the four picks. But oh, it was rough. In the offensive line, I mean they were going against Miles Garrett, who is a baller. They were going against Damian Clowney, who is a baller. Um, they those dudes are amazing. Amazing one two punch, amazing combo. Um, those guys, they're on point. Uh, so offensive line did the same stuff that they normally do. Uh, running backs, Devontae Freeman. Um, he he was trying. He was trying. He was making some nice little jump cuts. That's what he does. Um, and he is still being our quote-unquote lead back. Um, so I was happy to see that. Uh, Latavius Murray, he, uh, he he really couldn't really get much in any, anything going. But you know what's strange is that with Latavius Murray, it, it seems as if he, he never like even breaks – Many big ones. I mean, that's not the expectation when he goes in the game for me. But he never really breaks like that. Like even for eight to ten yards, ten to twelve yards, fifteen. That's he doesn't do that. Um, and then I always think, oh man, well the offensive line is really bad. But then you look at Devonte Freeman, and he doesn't do it too often, but he does do it. He'll make some stuff happen. So I know my guy Josh was saying maybe uh, Latavius Murray he's just not seeing the holes the same way Devonte Freeman does. And I would have to look into that a little deeper, um, but it just, it is what it is. So uh, Latavius Murray, he was trying. Like even on when the Ravens got on a one-yard line, they were like, all right, Latavius, do your thing. Here you go. Nope. Brown say, no, uh-uh. Then they're like, all right, Latavius, come on, do your thing. Run it back. Uh, Brown say, nope, mm-mm. And then, of course, the, the play that we all saw coming uh, on the third down where they ran a play action. Lamar faked it to the running back, and then he tried to throw it to Mark Andrews, but Miles Garrett was like, nope, not happening. I knew that was coming, and incomplete. Then they were going to go for it on fourth down, which I loved, but then Kevin Zeitler said, oh, nope, not happening. A false start. Back him up, and that lead us, leads us to Justin Tucker, who is amazing. He is the, the best kicker in the league, as we already know. Um, that dude has come up so many times for the Ravens, uh, and shout out to Ravens. Justin Tucker would not be the best, and I've said this before, so this ain't nothing new, but Justin Tucker would not be the best kicker in the league if he was on a different team. Well, if he was on a different team uh, and that team had uh, a consistent offense. Justin Tucker became a household name because the Ravens' offense was inconsistent. They were inconsistent. Nobody's going to call you the best kicker in the league if all you're doing is kicking a point after touchdowns. No. You got to be out there kicking field goal after 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 field goal. And that's what Justin Tucker was doing. Ever since 2012, that was, that's what he's been doing. So he got to establish himself pretty quick uh, back then. But, hey, he helped kick the Ravens to a Super Bowl. So hopefully he can help kick the Ravens to another one. We'll see how everything shakes out. But he is amazing, man. Amazing. Um, he has saved the Ravens so many times from themselves. <laughs> he's, whew, give it up to Justin Tucker. Um, receivers in this game. Hollywood, he had a he had an all right game. He his game was straight. It wasn't unspectacular, but it it was, it was straight. Uh, he didn't have any drops. He had the one. Well, is that even considered a drop? No, nah, he didn't drop it. But um, he had the one where he could have made a play on it, but it looked like Lamar just put it a little too outside that that deep ball over the top where he did that little stop and go. Um, uh, Lamar put it, it was a little uh overthrown. Well, not even overthrown, but it was just a little too too much to the outside. Uh, but he was getting some yak, and Hollywood has been showing this year. Like, no, I ain't about to just go slide. I ain't just gonna fall to the ground. No, I'm getting the yak. I'm getting it. So maybe that's a sign that he has been all the way healthy this year, like all the way. Um, so shout out to him. Sammy Watkins had one catch for eight yards. Rashad Bateman had like four catches. He had four targets, all catches. Um, <clears throat> but I, I don't know what happened to him in the second half. I don't remember like seeing him at all in the second half. I'm not sure if I maybe I missed him or I didn't see him at all, though. 
So I was like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, Mark Andrews. Uh, Mark Andrews. I did find out this morning because last night I was heated because I'm like, man, the pass interference. When uh, Lamar Jackson just was like, oh, all right, Mark, he got to be down there somewhere. Threw it up. And Mark Andrews came down with it. Even though he was interfered with, he came down with it with one hand. And I saw they, they called pass interference, but I saw that it was accepted. And it was like, oh, that's the, the, the what, 39-yard penalty, something like that. And I was like, what? I was like, give, give my guy his yards, man. I was, I, I was heated for him because he didn't get the yards. But I found out this morning that they did credit him with the yards. And I was like, okay, whew, that's great. Because he deserved it. He deserved it. Um, so shout out to Mark Andrews. It's crazy because <laughs> while we were streaming last night, uh, we were talking about Mark Andrews, and I was talking about how recently I said the drops have been dropping. I said the drops have been dropping, meaning that he hasn't been dropping recently. Right after he said that, oh, Mark Andrews, what oh, dropped? I said, oh, Mark, come on now. I'm over here just defending you and stuff, but hey, it's all good. I just he he got to get it out of his system uh, every now and then. Uh, but it's part of the game. It, it, it happens. Um, de defense. Defense. Uh, let's flip it to defense. They, again, amazing. Wink. Thank you. Thank you. This was a game where we've been talking about Wink all week. All week. Even though they won last week. We've been talking about Wink all week. This is what we wanted to see. Where you don't have to send everybody. Not saying to not blitz, but... You got to recognize your personnel. You don't have all the guys that you once had. You're missing a lot of people. And even though, even when you weren't missing as many people, they still struggled. But he gave his guys help. Even though there were some times when some, some uh, players, some Browns wide receivers were running wide open. <laughs> he said, hey, hey, hit me. Um, but he, he gave his guys help. He put them in position for the most part uh, to succeed. He blitzed. But he also had times where he rushed three and got pressure. Rushed four and got pressure. <laughs> and I was like, would you look at this? But Wink, he caught a great game. Didn't give up any touchdowns either. That David Njoku was not a catch. It clearly hit the ground. We saw it hit the ground. So this game should not have been as close as it was. It should not have been as stressful as it was. But... I guess the refs was like, "Hey, we come on, we 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 we're on, this game been boring. They ain't been scoring no touchdowns. The offenses have both been ugly. We we look, just just give it to them. Give it to these Browns, man. That wasn't no touchdown. Patrick Queen, amazing last night. Amazing. This is what happens when people are comfortable in their position. This is what happens when you put people in position to succeed. He was amazing last night. His confidence." Through the roof. It's through the roof right now. And I love that. Because when you have that confidence, you make smart decisions, you can play more aggressively, and you can just, you can believe in yourself. And that's not just for football, that's for anything. Because when you practice something, if once you get comfortable with something, once you get put in a position to do well at something, you can be better at it. And you saw that last night with Patrick Queen. This dude was flying all over the field. He didn't miss one tackle. But because of how great he had been playing up to that point, and even after that point too, I gave him a pass for that one because he deserved it. He had an amazing game. My favorite play from Patrick Queen last night was when um, I forgot what down the distance it was, but the Browns, they motioned Jarvis Landry across the field. They, they motioned him. And then Patrick Queen, he perfectly timed the snap and shot through, shot through the gap, made a tackle in the backfield. I think it was against Kareem Hunt. Maybe it was against Chubb. Either way. I mean, Ravens, they, they held the Browns. I think what the Browns got, like 40 yards rushing, something crazy. But they held the Browns rushing attack down. No Calais, like no Calais, <laughs> no Calais Campbell. They held it down, man. Because I know all of us was, even with Calais Campbell. I was, I was scared. I was worried, even with him. But the fact that he was out, I was like, oh, boy. But they made it happen. But Patrick Queen flying. Even another play where Chuck Clark set the edge. It was a couple plays after he dropped that pick. Oh, that was tough. But Chuck Clark set the edge, and Patrick Queen, he shot through, tackling the backfield. 
He was just playing with confidence and it just looked so good. Got scared, had that injury scare where he tried to make a hit on somebody, ended up hurting himself, but he came back in the game. So that was good to see. I really did think he was going to get a pick last night just the way he was playing, but it didn't happen. But again, he, he had an amazing game. And he has been playing so much better over these past couple of weeks because they put him in position to do well. Adafi away. What can I say, man? What can I say? Can we make every game primetime so Adafi away can shine? Um, Adafi away been doing his thing this year. Uh, he had a little quiet stretch for like a couple of games, but he seems to be back. Um, and I mean, he's a rookie. It's gonna have, not every player is gonna ball out every single week, even if they're not a rookie. Um, but Adafi away, good game last night. It was always getting double teamed. They were worried about him, and we can understand why. Um, the play where he got the sack strip uh, on Jarvis Landry because the Browns wanted to do some tricky stuff. Adafi away said, oh, I ain't biting. He said, oh, he said, no, not even that he ain't biting. He said, oh, you want to be a quarterback? Okay, I chase quarterbacks. So I'm chasing you, Jarvis. I'm chasing you. So he ran after him, forced that fumble. And then I, I think Patrick Queen recovered, I think. But either way, turnover. Loved it. Loved it. Um, Tyus Bowser. I, <laughs> I saw somebody say, we can't call him Tyus Bowser no more. We got to call him King Cooper. Shout out to Mario. Anyway, um, he... Over these past couple weeks, he's been trying to get a raise. He's trying to get the Ravens to, to pay him a little bit more. But he he was nice. Tyus Bowser was nice. Um, he got, a, he, I think he got a sack. He missed a sack too, but I know Justin Houston missed a sack too. Oh, it's so frustrating. I, I be feeling bad for him when they miss those sacks. Because they, with Tyus Bowser, he had beat his, uh, beat the right tackle, I think. And... He tried to get uh, Baker Mayfield, and he just missed him. I remember with Justin Houston, the sack that he missed, he was all over Baker Mayfield, but he just he lost his balance. He couldn't get his balance. So Baker Mayfield slipped past him. I was like, oh, man, so close. But Bowser, he, he balled last night, and then he, he closed out the game. Bowser was in coverage a lot. I think they were, there was a stat that they were talking about that Bowser is like the, the outside linebacker. He's a pass rusher that he drops back the most. In the league, like out of all pass rushers, something like that. But, and I mean, we know that swing scheme. Um, but he, in the, the very last drive, Baker Mayfield threw it to the tight end. Bowser finished the play. He finished the play, and he made sure that tight end did not catch that ball. Then a, a couple plays later, on fourth down, game on the line. If Ravens stopped him right here, that's it. Ravens won. Browns ain't got no timeouts left. Uh, Baker Mayfield threw it to the tight end I think he threw it to Najoku I think But whoever it was He threw it to him Bowser Wrap up tackle Tackled him Brought him to the ground Short of the first down Sealed the deal And I mean Bowser's just been sealing the games For the last two weeks Because remember last week He sacked Andy Dalton for the win So Bowser been showing out Check out Bowser And Bowser like Alright I'm trying to be a household name Y'all gotta know who I am Especially if I got a last name like Bowser, like that, that'd be such a cool household name. I like, I can't wait. We ain't we don't got no more. Uh, yeah, we done with primetime games. Um, well, until playoffs. Well, hopefully they make playoffs. They should make playoffs, but we done with primetime games for the year, I believe. Um, cause we got the yeah, the Steelers is four twenty five. The Browns is one o'clock, I believe. Um. We also got Packers, we got Bengals, we have, uh, let me just check real quick. We got Rams, two Rams is at one o'clock, I, I believe, as, as well. But what I what I'm, uh, was getting to when I say that, I, I just, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we didn't got no more prime time left. Yeah, okay, yeah, all, all one o'clock stuff, all one o'clock and fourth. Oh, Rams is at 425 as well. Okay, I like that. I be liking those little later games, man. Um, but anyway, uh, Bowser, like, I, I would love if they, they did the graphic. You know how on ESPN, on Monday Night Football, they do all those crazy graphics and stuff. Like, if they incorporated a Bowser one for Tyus Bowser, that would be nice. Um, but anyway, Ravens did it again. They did it again. Um, an ugly win, super ugly win, disgusting win, but it's a win. And what we always say... 
An ugly win will take that any day of the week over a pretty loss. Ravens, we continue to say the same thing every week. They keep finding ways to win, so that's great. But we keep saying the same thing every week, like, hey, they got to fix this. They got to fix that. They got to fix that. They got to fix that. But they keep winning. So we just, and the reason that we still talk about those things, even though they win, is because, again, competition is going up. It's, go, it's going to go up. It's only going up. So the Ravens are going to have to um, just really step it up. You, you, th- you, you can't get away with no four interceptions every week. You cannot get away with that. It's, it's impossible. Um, but even though Ravens, they, they've been doing some ugly stuff, and it's been looking like a lot of stuff is impossible, but they've still been making stuff happen. Um, but we just, uh, we just hope. Like somebody said uh, yesterday in the stream, when are we going to see these Ravens play a complete game? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oof, that's a good question. Great question. Let me get back to you on that one. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, team keep it clean. The Ravens are at first place, not just in the AFC North, but in the AFC Conference. If, we know they don't, but if the playoffs ended today, they will be the number one seed. And that's so weird. Like, that, that team, number one seed. <laughs> but, hey, they've been finding a way. They've been finding a way. And that's what it's about. Finding a way. Whether it's ugly, whether it's pretty, find a way to get it done. Find a way to get that job done. Find a way to make it happen. And the Ravens been doing that. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. As always, y'all know we got a fun-filled week this week. It's going to be busy as it always is. It's Steelers week, so that should add a little oomph to it after we just came off a division win, which is great. So we still got another division game. That is, and, again, it's just going to get that much tougher. Steelers coming off of getting beat down. Um, and if you look at the Ravens' box score, if you just looked at that and didn't look at the actual score of the game, just the stats and stuff, you would think the Ravens got beat down. Like, if I ever saw Lamar Jackson four interceptions, oh, man, we got blown out. But the fact that the Ravens won, this, they crazy. They crazy. But like we said last night, too, these Ravens, watching them will make you crazy, but you're also crazy if you watch the Ravens. But we love the Ravens, and we love these games, so that makes us all crazy. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And... This part of the craziness of Team Keep It Clean is out.